Welcome to the Prospect. <laughs> Wrong intro. Welcome to West Coast Wednesday here on Prospectors Radio with Kathleen Biffle, Rich Cooley, Scott Swiftwater Tony, Indiana Gold Hunter, Dennis Dayton, and your host, Tim Grimes. We hope you enjoy the show and thanks again for listening. All right, everybody, welcome back to another West Coast Wednesday here on Prospector Radio. Sorry about that little screw up on the intro, it happens occasionally. But joining me tonight, I got the greatest co-host in the world here. First off, we got Kathleen Biffle. How are you, Kathleen? Well, you know, besides the snow day. (laughs) (laughs) It wasn't really a snow day. I just stayed home and worked. Well, that's still kind of a snowish day because it was crappy out again. I I did stay in my pajamas all day, though. Isn't this like deja vu? (laughs) Didn't we just have like this crappy snow? Was it Sunday or Wednesday? We had It was Sunday. Sunday, yep. Yeah, that's right. We're just not done yet, are we? No. It's like, good God, again and again and again. It's like that movie Groundhog Day. <laughs> it just keeps... <laughs> well, it is my dredge anniversary today. Oh, I see the picture. You're right. That's... It was a uh, year ago today where I got my dredge. Happy dredge anniversary. Did I say that right? Dredge anniversary. Dredge anniversary. Yeah. I don't know. I made it up. That's <laughs> a good yeah, word. I, I saw that post on there, and it seems like you've had that thing longer than that. Don't Doesn't I? It? What a year, too. It's only been one year. <laughs> wow. And you've gotten that much gold with it in one year. Yes. Amazing. Now i got to dress it up. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking about that earlier, too. For the contest. I have well, a Well, not that I can win, but... Right, but uh, I have a cool plan. And I was thinking about it earlier. I said, ooh, I got to get a battery. I need a battery. Battery? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I don't even want to know. This is interesting. Yeah, it's going to be cool. I'm like, I, I need was a just battery. thinking about getting a different color Sharpie. Uh, oh, no. I can get a battery. You should, too. You should get a battery. Because you do some cool <laughs> things with lights. So. Oh, okay. Think about it. You could do some cool stuff and then. I mean, you don't have to dredge with it like that, but you could do that to dress it up for the picture, <laughs> then take that stuff off. That's where I'm thinking. I could hang beads from it oh, like a yeah. chandelier. Oh, you could do all kinds of crazy stuff. Mason <laughs> jars with some of your little lights in it and stuff. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. I'm telling well, so you. far, the only thing that I've thought about getting was um, the gold expanded metal through the whole box. So, uh, See, and that's cool. I think that'll look pretty. It would look pretty neat. Shiny. Will it stay shiny like that? I don't know. I mean, the one I have in there now, this just the little piece, uh-huh. is still shiny. Oh, well, heck, it probably would then. If not mm-hmm. a quick Then run. I have that uh, burgundy miner's moss, right. so that looks really fabulous together. See, so you got the <laughs> golden burgundy thing going on. I'm thinking vinyl wrap we should put on them, you know? Vinyl wrap. <laughs> You could do one that says. I don't know about that. Well, you could do one that says like "Wandering Buffaloes," and hmm. wrap your floats. And I could put like one that says "Prospector Radio," wrap the float. I wonder what something like that would cost. I think it'd be cool. It wouldn't be that big of a piece because floats aren't that big. It's not like wrapping yeah, a truck. Yeah, but would it get scratched up if you? Well, cause I drag mine. It's everywhere. pretty durable. I, I wouldn't put it on the bottom because yeah, it would scratch it up. I guess if we went up like halfway high on our floats and then wrapped Mm -hmm. it over that'd be cool see there's a lot of thinking about doing something more permanent to secure them Mm -hmm. the the floats anyway but i don't know yet yeah exactly as soon as you come up with it and i see it that's what i'm going with yeah yeah Yeah, definitely because uh i hate the bungees i do too i i'm not a fan of them no every time mine break and it's like ah I need a new bungee. I need a new bungee. I'm over to bungees. It's got to be a yes. better way. <laughs> and before it goes in the water this year, it will be done. Hey, hey, Shad got his handle up in the mail. Oh, cool. Is that handle up? Is that what it's called? That was fast. Yeah. When did you order it? Sunday? I think, I think so, yeah. Sunday. Sunday. Did you put it on yet? No. No. Okay. He hasn't. All right. Um, he was too busy trying to... Uh, Score a new generator oh, <laughs> with the okay. trade. All right, cool. Well, man, let us know. I'll let him you. talk about that. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wheeler Dealer Man. Yes. 
pretty cool. I don't know. He's always doing something. <laughs> like, Where are you going now? I got to meet a guy. <laughs> <laughs> like really? <laughs> okay. See you in a bit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> pretty much the way it goes. But he scored a new generator. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, way to yeah, go. But I just really itching to go out and just camp next to a creek and get back out there again. I just I've got cabin fever. Yep. Oh, he they're going to have enough power. Everybody just bring your camper. The biffles are going to free power. <laughs> they'll they'll have enough <laughs> juice. Bring the extension cords, they're good to go. They'll have enough juice to power the entire place, right? Oh, microwave, yeah. heater, deep freeze, we're have, yeah. like a strobe light and we're going to do like um, you know, have a nightclub. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Spotlights, <laughs> you know, the whole nine yards. Everything. That is cool. Very cool. But he got his handle up, too. Man, I, get that on and take a picture, Shad. That'll be cool. We could see that and see how much yeah. how much easier it makes carrying that Honda pump. You know? Very cool. That was fast delivery, too. Way to go. Good yes. deal. And, Kathleen, so what else is happening other than the crappy weather? Um, You know, just... Doing the parenting thing, and mm-hmm. we've, got, we've got another daughter who was supposed to take her driver's test today, but the roads were terrible, so they canceled it. Mm-hmm. That's good. So she's got to wait another day. One it's, more she's day. She's so nervous. Oh, of course. I, yeah, I bet she is. They get that way. Oh. She'll do fine. So we'll have three drivers on the road. <sighs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> oh. Three drivers, two to go. <laughs> Like I said, we're on our la- last one. That's it. You know, raising those kids like an assembly line. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Time for driver's license. Who's old enough? Let's go. And then it's time to move. Yeah. <laughs> Who's 18 today? Oop, time to move. <laughs> You're on your own. We're going to Arizona. We're going yep. to be somewhere warm. I know, right? Can't That's our wait. other dream. Get out of here. And away from the cold. Yep, but you gotta wait till um, you know. Yeah. Responsibility. Yeah, I know. That's what we say. We gotta wait until they're off in college or something, and then it's like, okay, we can go now. What well, do you have? Like two more years? Uh, I think it's two more. It's yeah. either one or about, two more. That's about our. It's ours not too, too bad. That's not too bad. I mean, we. No, can... I mean, I mean, you think about all the things you got to do to, you know, tie up loose ends and get rid of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm already making plans. Oh, me too. I'm Downsizing. Ready. I'm ready. I just want to go already. Go and just go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, think Christy's going to let you go. Oh, no. She wants to go, too. She wants to go somewhere warmer. So she's tired oh, of wow. this crap, too. She's over it. She she hates it. She hates it as yeah. much as I do. And that's cool. all she keeps saying. I just want to be somewhere warm. Enough of this stuff. It's just, I've lived here all my life, and I've dealt with it for too many years, and it's like... Oh, yeah, I agree. And it ain't like, I love Ohio. It's like, really? I always say, dang, why didn't my dad pick another state to <laughs> live in when he was young? Why didn't he go, hey, we're going to Arizona, baby. <laughs> why didn't he do that? I don't know nope. why people land in Ohio, honestly. No, I don't either. I wasn't born here. <laughs> well, I know why my dad did. He was born in West Virginia. In West Virginia, they came to Ohio. It was like oh. going to another world, I think. So it's like, all right, Dad, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, did you uh, catch the Wandering Buffaloes video we put yeah, out? Yeah, that was Yesterday, pretty cool. Yeah, the, 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 the metal detecting nugget one. Yeah. Which, so you uh, got to see us using the Mine Lab Gold Monster. That was the Gold Monster. Pretty yes. cool. That's the first time I've ever. I mean, I've seen people do it with the metal detecting and finding nuggets in mm-hmm. the desert, but that's the first time that you know we actually got to do it. it I was, didn't find anything. It as was you can cool. See in the video. Yeah, but still, um, it was cool. But Shad did it. A phenomenal job. Yeah, he did. When he was sitting there time. just like, plink, there's another one. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's one. And it looks so warm. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was. That's what I was, was admiring, perfect. too. It was like, and that was December. That's what see, it's like that's in amazing. December. It's that's, amazing. <clears throat> no. That's their uh, winter. Yeah, that's for us. We need it. 
not this, but yeah, way to go. Great video. It was very awesome. I'm surprised Shad didn't rush out and buy him a gold monster. Is that well, the detective? I think, I think he will get one when we move. Is that the one he but wants? I think so, yeah. He really liked it. Okay. It was easy to use, and it, you know, once, I mean, once you find your nuggets like that, you're mm -hmm. just kind of hooked. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a great find. I mean, that's a real nice find. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would have stopped. I would have just metal detected the rest of my trip, probably. Very cool, though. Great video, yeah. you guys. How many more you got from the trip? From still? Arizona? Yeah. At least three. At least three more? Okay. I think. Okay, everybody, don't forget, subscribe to the Wandering Buffaloes. If, oh, yeah. If you haven't yeah, already, definitely. I mean, that's Kathleen and Shad. You guys listen to them every week here. Subscribe to their YouTube station. If you, and I'm sure you're already subscribed to Dennis's. So click yeah. on over and subscribe to the Wandering Buffaloes as well. And check out those great videos. You know, very cool. And we'll wander to a place near you. That's right. You never know where they're going to wander to. <laughs> We're not doing much wandering right now, though. No. I'm wandering to work and back. Our hibernating buffaloes right now. They're not wandering. That's for sure. That is for sure. You guys there? Yes. Okay. Can you hear us? Yeah, I just seen something weird pop up on the screen from Skype. I'm like, what? I think Scott's trying to get a hold of you. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Remember that little guy? <laughs> Barbecue boy. <laughs> Barbecue boy. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe he yeah. is. Let's try to add him. Let's see what's going on there with him. Well, Kathleen, thank you for being here as always. Yep. Let's see. Let's see if we can get Barbecue boy in here real quick before I introduce Dennis. Or I don't I I can't do the message thing while we're doing this. I'm afraid I'll drop you guys and have to start all over. All right. Anyhow, also joining me tonight, we got our little buddy, the Indiana Gold Hunter himself, Dennis Love Shack. Dayton, how are you there, Love Shack? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about Driver's Ed. Mm -hmm. Oh, we yeah. We got a 15th birthday party. My daughter turned 15 on the 3rd. Uh-oh, that's right. And... So I had to work the weekend. So once again, I missed another birthday of one of my kids. Ah, oh, bummer. But we're gonna. But the plan is shut down this weekend. So we're gonna take her out. She wants to take her friends and go to do a pool party. So we're gonna get a hotel somewhere that has a pool and celebrate her birthday. And sure, I'm gonna take her and let her go shopping and pick some things out. And and then this summer. When she starts her driver's ed, it's the last one. So they got it. They start at fifteen or fifteen and a half. How does that work down there? Right. Fifteen and a half. Right. They can start the driver's ed. They can start the driver's ed at fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Are you doing? Is she doing the online thing? No, we'll go through the school. Yeah, we'll go through the school. Oh, you guys still have it in the school. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Wow. Cool. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So there's another insurance payment. Yeah. Car payment. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And then, you know, she's a she's a uh freshman in high school, so I have I retire in five years. And that's when I'm gonna hit the warm weather. So I've got I've got five years to go. You got the five year plan. Yeah. Gotcha. Makes sense. Five years. I've had it I've had the I've had the fifty five is and I've had that plan for many, many, many years. I it's like you tell all all the the young ones out there always set a goal, you know, try to reach for that goal. Doesn't mean you're gonna hit it, but always set a goal. And yeah. and you know, I started out when I started where I work, you know, and I just started pumping a, a ton of money in my four hundred one K and and uh I set a goal. I wanted to re retire when I was fifty five because I want to be able to enjoy I want to go prospect. I want to go do things. I want to travel. I want to, if I wait till I'm 65 or what, 67 now or whatever it is, they keep raising it. You know, I, I probably wouldn't be able to get out and even hold a pan. <laughs> so my goal was before I was 50. So I'm going to definitely, hopefully 
get there soon. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is, I hope I live long enough to retire. <laughs> That's a good goal, because I'm never going to retire. You just you have to stay away from the hot dogs and hamburgers because that's the devil. Oh, it is the devil. It's it is it's a devil, Dennis. I know we like. Yeah, them, your arteries, your arteries are, are we're already in overload. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, so have another hot dog, there, artery yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah. Have another water. Yep, oh, exactly. I'm telling you, hey, that's a good. But, yeah, I, I'm looking for. I'm looking for retirement and. Uh, birthday party this weekend of course mom and dad they're up they're up from oklahoma and um you know got to visit with uh mom and dad yesterday and sent michael some uh, you know he's building that trommel so i got some pictures taken of that trommel i've got to get him some more pictures right get some but, more did you fix the yeah, wheels on it some, the top of it and i got some more to get him i'll get him some more pictures i just did you did you do the wheel thing you was talking about on it? Didn't you say you had to change the wheels or the casters or something? Oh no, I haven't actually changed the casters yet on it. I still got to do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, our, our boy Scott's having Skype issues. I wonder if he updated his Skype. Any I idea? don't mind to be working Your a lot better be now since I did mine. Now, but at least you were online this time and you know not like the current that you've had to restart it every dang time that's why i just told scott to restart his and see what happens because it ain't even really showing him online it shows him away so, right so i don't know i don't maybe know. it's just but, too hot in arizona <laughs> maybe he said it's been working great all week <laughs> i i did something that is usually against my religion uh oh what'd you do i went and bought well you know what i did well, i went and bought a, a truck well tell us oh yeah it's a buddy of mine and and i went and bought it's a uh a 2000 extended cab four by four it has a triton v8 and it. it's a ford beautiful white i mean it's a beautiful truck it's Man, a ford it's a ford huh it's a Ford. Oh, but, uh, I thought you were a Chevy guy. Uh -huh. I, but I, I bought it to resell because that that the, one of the things I'm doing with that is is that when I sell that truck, that's gonna it pays for the trip to Roaring Camp with me and my wife, and then also uh, pays for my trip to Alaska for at least a week to go to Razors. Oh, uh, you you going down there too this year? Uh huh. Yeah, you're gonna be a busy man. Yep, that's just one of a couple places of a few that I'll be traveling to this year. Do I have time to prospect with us this year? I should. I I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit my claim. I'm gonna go there for at least a week in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna try to do one of the outings with Jeff Williams, one of the metal detecting oh, outings be, that he has. That'd be fun. Yeah, so I plan on doing one of those. Well, how do you do them? How do you get them? Um, Sorry, I'm, he has, I'm eating he Reese. He talked about it on his videos <laughs> where you can, yeah, you could basically just sign up for it and it kind of gives you the details, what it costs and places you can stay. And, you know, if you want to drive down with an RV or, you know, you want to get a cabin or. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty fun, wouldn't it? Well, apparently, because you're going to do it. So. Yeah. So well, you're going to do that, Warren Camp, Alaska. My claim. Your claim. You're going to be. But I'd, I'd probably try to do the do the my claim, and I might take a couple of weeks. I might do, you know, I might not even have to take a full two weeks. Try to do the weekend with Jeff when he has one, and then that week just drive over to my claim because mm -hmm. it's fairly close. So. Right. Well, that'd be cool. One of these days, I'll get down there to your claim. But I have to get with Jimbo because I got to see about, you know, what what his plans are, what he's doing, and maybe he can drop the rhino off. And I think I think he might have some dredging equipment out there. I'm not sure. Is there water on your claim? Certain times Certain of the times year there of is. Year? Oh, that's good. 
Heck, that's real good. Yeah, we, we all need to get out there one of these days, Dennis. Yeah, I think we have a total of, there's like five claims out there now. Yeah, me, so, me you, Kathleen, Shad, Scott, we all need to get out there one of these days. Go together. <clears throat> That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Now, 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 Scott comes. We have to draw him a map with crayons. With crayons. Yeah, he got he got lost <laughs> last time. I'm I'm gonna have to, you know, <clears throat> more and more. I'm gonna I'm starting to switch this to Scott. That maybe he needs a jitterbug computer and the Crayolas. <laughs> Not so much Dennis. There we go. You're starting <laughs> you know? to figure that out. I'm starting to figure this one out, guys. It's like hmm. Things make me go, hmm, that's one of them. It's like, maybe I need to give Dennis a break. <laughs> yep. I think I'm going to have to do a jig with things that make me go, hmm, mm-hmm. huh? With Scott? Yep. Or, with Scott. Yeah, with, yeah, with Scott. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That it would be it. That would be perfect, Dennis. Do it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Jitterbug computer and Crayola maps for Scott. But I tell you, I tell you another place that I'd really like to go. Where's that? I would love to go prospect with Darren from Dirt Hog. Oh yeah, that's my dream. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh yeah. I'd love to spend a week, a weekend, a week, go prospect with him, and or, uh, oh, help me out here, guys. We had him on as a guest before. God oh, darn. You know who I'm talking about. His boy used to go with him and his dog. Oh, oh, Darcy. Darcy Cooper. Yeah, that would be another dream. Prospect with Darcy and Jeff yeah, Williams. His, I miss his videos, man. He's got, you know, he hasn't had any in a while. And I'm, I'm going like, man, I wonder what's going on. Because I love watching them videos. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe he's just been too busy. And then all of a sudden at the end of the year, he'll post like a bunch of them or something. You know, maybe he's just been well, super busy. He first started out, you know, and he just did a lot of stuff by hand. You know, of course, he builds his own sluices and stuff. And then mm-hmm. I think the last year he actually got an excavator and, and uh, you know, he started getting some big equipment in there. And he started finding some nice gold. That's what I mean. Maybe he's just doing that right now and not the videoing. And that'll come later, later in the year when, I don't know. We'll have to find out. Because, yeah, we all miss him. Great videos from Darcy, <clears throat> as always. Like, you know, like I said, Jeff and. All them guys, they all do great, great videos. So, another dream prospect with Jeff, Darcy, Darren. There's a bunch of them. Would like to. Oh yeah. You know. It's on my bucket list. Oh yeah, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Man. Oh, absolutely. It would be. Here, maybe yeah. Den- maybe Dennis could answer this question. What's that? See, when you was a kid, <laughs> remember this toy? It was like came in a cardboard box. It was. A flat background, and you peeled off like the rubberized people, and you'd stick them on, and you could peel off little hats and put on them. <laughs> That's just killing you that you don't know what that is. <laughs> gloves. Dude. What was that thing called? What was somebody got to know? Now what? You peeled what off? Remember, you'd get you. It would be like a background, and it was kind of it like had little plastic. It was plastic. Uh, flat plastic pieces, like rubbery plastic. You could, you know, and you'd lay them on there on the like background like a person and then you'd grab like a hat off there and put a hat on them and stuff like oh, that Remember yeah. the peel off. what the heck was that thing called were they like i don't know peel offs maybe <laughs> somebody <laughs> somebody in the chat peel room's got to know what it was called it was yeah it was a plastic peel off i just googled it yeah and it's, it's in the set from the 70s, from the 70s. And you make your own little scenes and stuff what the heck was it called? It's making me crazy. Plastic. Now what, what, made, what made you think of that? Oh, me and Kathleen was talking about something earlier. Uh-huh. But it just like ping, it stuck in my head and me and her both been going, what? We know what it is, but we can't think of what it's called. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought maybe you might know because you're a child of that era too. Yeah, I, I played with one of those. I remember having one of those. Me too, and many of them. It's like you always got one every year for Christmas, I swear. I like the thing that you could draw on, and then you would lift up the gray thing, and it would disappear magically, and then you drew on it. It was like a piece of cardboard. Oh, I can't remember, remember that, that? One either. <laughs> I know that one too, but I can't remember the name. That was one of my favorites. Dang it. No, my, fa- my favorite was... Uh, 
it was like a motorcycle or a car, and it had like this little zip tie you put through the middle of it, and you pull it real fast, and then you set it down, and boom, it takes off. Yeah, I, mean, I remember that one too, but I another one, can't remember the name. And what was the one that had the little bald-headed guy, and you took the magnet, and you'd pull the little metal shavings up and give them like a mustache and hair and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Remember that one? What oh, was that called? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, here, look at us reminiscing. We're I giving think, our age away. And I think that was, was like magnetite in that one is what they used or something, wasn't it? Magnetite. Yeah, like black sands is what they used in that. Probably. Yeah, it was. So, but oh, my gosh, heck? we can make our own games with our black sands. But what the heck was it? Oh, color forms. That's what that was called. Color forms, yeah. Thank you, Randy. Oh, Randy, Scotty Tony got nailed that one. Thank you, awesome. color forms. Now tell us the name. Us. Now tell us the names of the other ones. <laughs> that way, you want to know? It's like God, color forms. Do they still make color forms? I don't think so. Darn, that was. I'm probably afraid kids will eat them. But there's an app for that. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Oh, <man. laughs> awesome. Good man. Oh, that. It feels better knowing what the heck what, that was called color so now you can sleep tonight oh i can now sleep like a baby knowing it it's like color (laughs) forms what i I like to know is is the gold going up or down i don't know stock market been going crazy let's ask our producer mr shad Shad. Shad. it's time for (laughs) ask shad (laughs) hello everyone (laughs) hey google boy (laughs) welcome to today's special segment of ask shad (laughs) So you want to know about the gold prices, not about me. Okay. So <laughs> We'll get to that after the gold prices. All right. Well, obviously, like Dennis said, stock market's just been all over the place. And you think that would be good for gold. Um, right now, though, at the bottom of the page, um, as a close of business today, uh, gold fell $10 to $13.15. Mm. Ooh. Silver fell thirty cents to sixteen dollars and thirty cents. Platinum, platinum tumbled by thirteen dollars to nine hundred and eighty. And that palladium just decided to jump off a cliff and go down twenty seven dollars <laughs> to nine hundred and eighty three. Man, I tell you what, palladium be the one jump. to really stock up on now. That's a big jump. Well, what's up with palladium though? It was doing so well before. I don't know. I have no idea. That's just kind of weird. It is kind of weird. That's a big drop, too. $27. Yeah. B. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Look into that, Shad. Yeah, oh. Google man. What's happening, Shad? What are you, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, you know. Uh, got, what did we get, over five inches of snow today. So all the kids decided to stay home and not go to school, which was disappointing. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> he had to put up with all of us. Well, they today. closed our schools, didn't they? Close yours? Yeah, yeah, they did. Oh, okay. So all the kids were home. But uh, no, uh, I've been talking to this one guy on uh, on one of those not Craigslist, but I think it was actually the Facebook Marketplace. Mm-hmm. And I was, I've always been watching. You know, it'd be good to have another Honda generator, one of the two thousand watts. You know, and be able to connect them and parallel them together just to power more stuff um and uh so uh, this guy uh not lives not too far away uh we ended up just doing a trade oh, straight cool. up for you know a uh, smith and wesson bodyguard 380 semi-automatic pistol so luckily you know ohio law were allowed to do this because he was an <laughs> adult he showed me a valid state id mm-hmm. so completely legit that's right. ohio transaction that's ohio. Yeah. right oh cool and he was a good upstanding man so it, it was pretty cool met him this evening got it works great it's in almost new shape really so excited about now to get back out there and camp and yeah but tell power. me what you traded for yeah you stole it chad Oh yeah, well the and what's funny, like that pistol I traded, I actually previously traded a rifle that I purchased for a hundred and twenty dollars <laughs> mm-hmm. that really was worth maybe a hundred and fifty. Oh wow! So I've constantly you trade traded up. Up on that. I, I love bartering. So yeah. we, got, you, we got a generator for a hundred bucks, 120 basically hundred twenty dollars. Yeah. yeah. 
You want your money back? <laughs> barter, barter kings that don't have nothing on you right now. Mm-mm. Man, I'll give you 120 back for it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need a generator, man. That's a sweet deal. Holy. Yeah. yeah, and then of course, like Kathleen said, I got my handle up kit in, which you know he ships priority, so that baby comes within two to three days, depending on where you live. So that was cool to get it, and yeah, I eventually I'll get it installed here before we go out, mm-hmm. obviously. But uh, nice, uh, that was fast. Yeah, that's like it's a little cold to play around in the garage right now, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but exactly. I, I'll take a. I took a picture of at least what it, the packaging, and I got to say, it's very nice presentation. So very cool. I'll post it on the site here in a little okay. bit. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I know. I. I think you ordered it Sunday, and here you got it Wednesday. Yeah. That's fast. Sunday, uh, early evening, I think, late afternoon or some about somewhere about. So, you know, for our winners, uh, who won one on Sunday show, they mm-hmm. should have got it or will get it here within the next day. Yep, very cool. Yeah, that. Michael Myers said he already got his flow pan. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> that was fast too, quick. Oh, I definitely, I definitely got to have one of those. I, I flow want a pan. flow pan. The old flow pan. Definitely, yeah, I got to get one of those. Definitely on your want list, right? Yeah, I will have one this year. Cool, cool, cool. I don't know what I want. Hmm. <laughs> no, I don't. There's nothing I really. Maybe no, start good. collecting the things that we need to, for air. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's going to be a big purchase, yeah, so we're going to piecemeal idea. that. <laughs> yeah, that's a real good idea. Yeah. I mean, really, to get by, it's not too, too bad, but I want to get it at least something started here by summer to be able to do it. Now, right. to invest in a good mask and everything, that's going to take some time because those things aren't cheap. No, for a nice Holy one, right? Cow. I want the face one. Yeah, full face, definitely. Oh, yeah. I mean, I found one you can get. I think we even used one. It was like the black one. I, I see it in a lot of places, 80 bucks. It works good if mm. you're not diving too deep. Right. But, you know, everyone does say eventually you do want to get a better quality one. It's, you know, well, yeah, <clears> but those start, I swear, good ones I saw that people recommended. It was like five to $700 wow. for one mask. So. Holy cow. That's... We'll be watching that for a while. Yeah, maybe that's... he trade something. Yeah, maybe he could trade that <laughs> generator for two of them. <laughs> well, that's how I got my three inch dredge, keen dredge that has the <laughs> compressor. Traded I traded a gun for that's it. That's right. Trade, trade, trade. There I you mean, go. that's the way to do it. True that... currency. <laughs> trade. It's all There's about... stuff people want and need to have, and so do I. So why don't we work together and find common ground? And yeah. one man's trash is another man's treasure. Hey, my guns aren't trash. Well, <laughs> well, that Smith and Wesson was. I could have cared less about that, but that's still great because everybody likes to barter, right? Yeah. So he traded the gun that I got him for the dredge. So basically, I bought him his dredge. Right. Right. <laughs> hey, that's nothing. You like else. how she takes credit for everything. <laughs> I can't uh, take credit for those nuggets you found, though. Oh, Kathleen, Michael's pan will be there tomorrow. Oh, He just tomorrow. sent me a message. It'll I thought he already got tomorrow. it. Nope, tomorrow. Sorry, Michael. I, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't really see that well. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy. I'm but telling. Yeah, that, um, oh, I, I'll talk a little bit more, you know, the video from the metal detecting out in Arizona. Yeah, go ahead. Um, one, it was kind of cool because I... You know, we've had all this footage, so I finally got to go back and watch it. I was like, wow, I thought I just found three in that pocket, not five. So that was kind of cool to relive it. But uh, with the Mind Lab Gold Monster, I was talking with Jim Hamilton when we were there because he previously loved the Fisher Gold Bug, too. I mean, he swore on it how great of a machine, and it is a great machine. But he says when he was with someone else out in that same area, and he had his gold bug too, and the other person just got the Mind Lab Gold Monster. Mm-hmm. The Mind Lab Gold Monster was just picking up even the smallest little pickers, and it was just he just he was amazed. So right then and there, I mean that he went home and sold his gold bug too and bought the Mind Lab. Okay. So I was a little skeptical, 
one, we've never detected for actual gold before. Right. Well, I kind of tried once, but I just had a little bounty hunter and didn't know what I was doing mm -hmm. um, a couple years back. So, like I said, I, I, I was shocked. I mean, just at how it just picked up. It's a great machine um, for gold. And, I mean, to be able to get... I mean, you always see the pictures of people detecting and finding, you know, nice large nuggets per you know you, you don't really see too much of the people detecting and getting smaller size which as we know there's a lot more gold mm -hmm. that is smaller right right so you see the big ones yeah so it was, it was it was cool and you know in arizona and the area we were in it was like heavily mineralized mm -hmm. and like in the beginning of the video kathleen was playing <laughs> with it and so was jimbo and it kept just sounding hot off rocks. it was just all the hot rocks all right so i mean it's a great machine I, cool. I definitely recommend if you, if you are in the market and you are looking to possibly get a detector for gold nugget shooting mm -hmm. try to get somebody try it out first of course but for the price um i know what are they around 700 or so off the top of my head i i don't really know yeah uh, it comes with two coils too yeah i mean it's where do you get them from? Well, I know, like, our buddy, uh, Mike Dahl, um, was it American Mining or... Supply. Yeah, American Mining Supply. Supply. Yeah, he sells... There's a lot of dealers, too. Um, but it's... I would definitely check it out. I was really impressed. Obviously, Jim Hamilton, you know, switched over, so... I, I, it's it's a cool machine to check out, and it is so simple because it auto ground balances for you. You don't have to do it; you literally turn it on and go. Mm -hmm. It's a plug and play. What I call it a plug and plug play. And play yeah. Idiot proof. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even I were, was able to do it. So. Yeah. Well, I must be an idiot because I could not. <laughs> no, I'm just not a metal detector. Not, I guess uh... I'll stick to dredging and dry washing. He can do the metal. Yeah, detecting. you're not into the all electronic stuff. Like nah. you're, you're like buoy on that. Just give me the dredge. I'm good to go. But although uh, you know the jitterbug <laughs> metal detector. Mm. <laughs> there we go. Well, I see. I've always I've been toying when we've gone to different shows and seen all the different detectors that the Mind Lab SDC twenty three hundred. Mm -hmm. I think Dan Solar was chatting about it. I love that machine because it looked like I could just beat the crap out of it. It folded up. It was compact. Yeah. But, oh, my God, pretty much had to, you know, put a lot of money back to be able to buy one of those because it, it's a hefty price tag. Yeah, see. Uh, How much is that And that's that gold? what's so cool about this gold monster. How much is that thing, the gold monster shit? Like the mid uh, let me. 700 Yeah, I, I want to say when we saw them, they were around 700 that's yeah, bad. that's not, and that's that's affordable. Yeah, I mean, that's not very bad. the whole kit. I just pulled something up really quick. Granted, this is Amazon, but it was like seven ninety nine. But it came with like headphones and tons of extra. So oh, probably okay. for the machine, you could probably get around seven hundred if you looked at it. Right, oh, that's not bad at all, really. I mean, heck, that's cool machine. Good. Check our video out. Do some googling. But yeah. if you're looking to get one. I would definitely cons make that a consideration for shooting for gold nuggets. Heck yeah. I think you get it's been in the military. I think there's a military discount too. There might be. Something, I think there is. Something to check If in. I remember right, don't know if Michael Dahl's listening, don't hold me to it. But I think there is a military discount. Hmm. All right, cool. Well they'll have to check in it after looking for one. Right? Heck yeah. Very cool. Well Shad, thank you for being here, brother. We appreciate it. And on that note, I think we kick it over to Kathleen and let her dredge up some news. It is time for Dredging Up the News with Kathleen Biffle. Mining news from around the globe. Metal detecting, dredging, entertainment news, and fun facts as well. Here's Kathleen. All right, everyone. February 7th, right? Yeah, the 7th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 2018. <laughs> All right. In Nevada... EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt visited the Coer Mining uh, Company's Rochester Mine near Lovelock. He visited to discuss the agency's December decision not to issue final regulations for financial responsibility requirements 
for certain hard rock mining operations. So the EPA decided not to issue the final rules under uh, what's known as the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act. Whoa, that's a mouthful. (laughs) Or CERCLA, (laughs) or also known as Superfund. Hmm. Well, why? They stated the risks associated with these facilities um, and their operations are addressed by existing federal and state programs and industry practices it would have basically affected 45 facilities across Nevada um, and then many more across the country. Pruitt was quoted as saying, we need to work together over the next several years to get back to stewardship and not prohibition, and that the EPA has been weaponized against certain sectors of our economy, and that's not the way it should work. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty good quote. Um, Pruitt said he aims to help restore a a partnership between the states and the federal government to be the good stewards of the environment. What he described as the common sense approach. We all like that, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) He said the decision reflects the direction of President Donald Trump to put America first. Mining companies invest in jobs and expand operations. They are also looking to streamline the processes to approve permits. Hmm, interesting. That's in the works. Oh, cool. all right. No, it is. It is. You know, it, you've got to be able to compromise, you know. Right. It's all about compromise. Balance. Balance. That's the word. <laughs> Feng shui. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Sorry, I had to take a drink no, of water. In global news, uh, we've got three stories, I do believe, in the global news. A lot going on. Cool. cool. Uh, 955 workers from a gold mine in South Africa, they've been safely brought back to the surface. Uh, the other night, members of the local community and other workers kept vigil outside the mine shaft. They're praying for the miner's safe return. Uh They've been trapped underground due to a power out- outage that occurred last Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. And all their backup generators stopped working. So the accident is thought to have occurred when a storm knocked over an electricity pylon close to the site. Wow. So, but by Friday, the, the electricity did turn back on. So how many was down there? Uh, 955 men in this mine, evidently, uh, it has 23 levels Mm -hmm. going down, uh, about 3,200 feet below the ground. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Wow. The rescued miners were just treated with cases of dehydration and high blood pressure, but nothing serious. So that's good. They're, they are being taken for food and showers upon their reliefs. Before having medical health checks. South Africa is a leading gold producer, but safety in the industry is often questioned. Mm -hmm. So there have been more than 80 fatalities that were recorded in South African mines in 2017. So in the meantime, it brings us to our next story. Again, South Africa. (laughs) A 9 billion rand... That's their their money. That equates to about seven hundred and seventy five million dollars. Anyway, uh, the that's the amount of the settlement that is said to be able to settle within months. That the suit was brought um, against South African gold producers by miners suffering from lung diseases, which includes this the sil- silicosis. Mm-hmm. I think I said that right. Silicosis. Mm-hmm. So this lawsuit's been going on for six years, <clears throat> and uh, what they're doing is, um, you know, the miners who are suffering from silicosis, they were claiming, you know, they got it because they were inhaling the silica dust in gold mines. Right. So that's that's a big settlement. Yeah. yeah. And these are big companies too that they named. There's six of them involved. Oh, wow. Um, Harmony Gold, you know, I've talked about them before. Yep, I think so. Uh, Gold, Gold Fields, African Rainbow Minerals, and the Sabine Stillwater, Anglo Gold Ashanti, and Anglo American. Though Anglo American um, doesn't have gold assets, but they are a bullion producer. Wow. 
Oh, there. Jeez. That's just nuts. <sighs> All right, so I've got another, um, not in South Africa. <laughs> oh, okay. I know in 2017 I talked a lot about China and all the things that they're doing in, in the global markets. Well, interestingly enough, China's output fell 9% as global gold mine supply plateaued in 2017. Hmm. A story featured in the Financial Times reports that there is a falling global gold mine supply after rising every year since 2008. Hmm. China accounts for about 15% of the world's gold production. Uh, but since 2016, authorities have tightened their scrutiny on their gold mining, which is leading to the closure of the small mines in the country. And as regulations tighten... At home, China's gold companies are increasingly looking to make overseas acquisitions. See, there's what's got me. <clears throat> what kind of mining, I mean, what kind of prospecting do they do in China? You never see, like, Chinese people in the creek panning or dredging. I've never seen that. Unlike, I don't think it's I mean, plastic. Deposit. I don't think it's I, that. I think it's hard rock mining. Hard rock? Mm -hmm. You think it is? I mean, it is mountainous <clears throat> in the northern parts, mm -hmm. right? But you still think they would have some plaster gold, right? Oh, they probably do, but but I mean, it's just as... it's just I don't. When you say China, I don't think of it as this is the big country for gold. You know, it's like they just don't share their secrets and maybe, show what they're doing. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe they're just not telling. You know, they might be lined up with dredges down there, just getting all kinds of gold. It's like. You never and, see and the it. Chinese, they're actually part of our gold rush, you know? Mm -hmm. right. they, they were around for You're right. you know, yeah. all of ours, so they've always been interested in that gold. I just wonder, is there like any Chinese gold prospecting forums out there that, you know, that they're... I just, we're going to have to Google and find yeah. <laughs> Google that one, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Chad, you have to Google it. <laughs> Google boy. <laughs> all right. Well, I Sorry. thought that was just interesting, especially with all the all the influence that China has yeah. on the global market is crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they nice. they are a big hitter. <laughs> I think electronics when I think of China, not gold. Oh, I think of ev everything yeah. anymore. Well, I was watching a program where we're getting ch um, honey from China. Uh, oh wait. <laughs> And it's not real honey. Right, that's right. I seen that. Yeah. Yeah, that the is really yeah. weird, ain't it? That oh. that was really strange. That gives you something to really go hmm about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, the next story I have is about another country who was they were uh, suffering some financial tensions um, in Greece. Uh, I, let me see if I can pronounce this. Go, go How, for it. Halkadiki? Halkadiki. <laughs> that's, that's, I'm going with it. <laughs> Halkadiki, um, the ongoing environmental and economic tensions um, are brewing with Canadian mining company El Dorado Gold. The mine is in the process of op operating three copper ore and gold mines in that region. The majority of the population is in favor of the mines. However, at the same time, some residents are upset. Uh, of course, they're upset with the destruction of mines would wreak through deforestation, large-scale drilling, water contamination, and building of hazardous waste dam atop an active seismic fault. Mm. Hmm. So, I guess I would be concerned. I would be fault. a little upset myself, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> conflicts actually had started back in 2012 between the, the gold company and and the residents there. Wow. But that's, if you remember, that was the fallout of their uh, government's debt crisis mm -hmm. that they were experienced. So that's when um, El Dorado threatened to pull out of, out of the Greek investment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they got them to stay because it is offering jobs. And then, you know, they're still getting, they're still getting pushed back with some of the residents. All right. But, uh, if you were yeah, the resident, so, we'd we'd be concerned too, definitely. Just they, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the earthquake thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a little odd. I mean, come on. Can you put it somewhere else? <laughs> you got to put it right there. Or, or move the dam, you know, right. somewhere Just else. Just compromise. Work with them. Or, you know, yeah. And then everybody gets along, and it's all good. Maybe they will come to a compromise. Maybe. Uh, I know that, that there's still tension going over there, mm-hmm. and the, the, the company is saying that even though they're built on an earthquake-prone region, um, they're just basically saying that, hey, you know, we've got, we designed this dam. It's, we took that into consideration when we designed the dam's construction. Um, it's within regulation. They followed all the rules mm-hmm. that they kept throwing at them, and, you know, they're still pushing back. All right. So, you know, something's got to give. Yeah, one, uh, one side's or the other. Yeah. Give. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I guess the the area is earthquake prone, and what they're they're afraid of is, you know, the history of the area. In 1932, and that was not too long ago, an earthquake shook the town in uh, Halkadiki. Halkadiki. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aftershocks lasted for months, oh. and the mining activity at the time, though it was smaller than it is now. It was located around, along the same area on the fault. Mm-hmm. So that one re- registered 7.2 on the Richter Phew, scale. That's a big quake. Yeah, and I guess um, they were... Fine. Reason for concern. Yeah, they're concerned. <laughs> just, a, just a smidge. I, I, honestly, I would be too. Yeah, oh, definitely. Mm, interesting. I'm sure there's more to come on that one. Probably. Oh, I mean... Yeah. I seem to be seeing Greece pop in the in the news every now and then because you don't really hear a lot about it in the gold mining there. You're usually hearing about Australia and the giant ginormous nuggets they find. Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, so it was gold you know different boulders. to hear about Greece. Yeah, something <laughs> different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so that brings us to our fun facts. Oh, fun facts and. This one is, I thought it was interesting. I learned a lot from it. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> well, did you know that the Comstock Lode is actually the first major discovery of silver in the United States? No, I did not. I always thought it was gold. Oh, I don't know. It's saying silver was discovered before gold? Yes. They're oh. known, it's known for the silver. Oh. Even though it had gold ore. Uh, that's what the real Comstock load is actually made up of. <laughs> oh, okay. It, it's said to have, have ended the California gold rush when when they discovered that silver. Okay. Um, so I mentioned on Sunday on my Closer Look segment that the mining mogul, George Hurst, mm-hmm. he was actually one of the first men on the site at the Comstock load. Right. Um, so... It got me thinking uh, also because I just recently read the book, The Comstock Load. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a novel by Louis Leamour, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, he's an American novelist, believe it or not, but he has a really French name. Frenchy. Yeah, it sounds French. <laughs> so I enjoyed the book, uh, obviously, and, and I thought, okay, well, you know, I just thought it was fiction, and then you hear about it in, you know, some of the Gold Rush tales, but what is, you know, what's that place all about? Right. <laughs> so, here's some facts about that place okay. and, and time and history. So, it was discovered in the spring of 1850 by uh, Mormon immigrants on their way to the California Gold Rush. Oh. Yeah. So um, and the, it is known as the richest silver load in, on U.S. soil. Hmm. So I did not know it was about I didn't silver. Know that either. <laughs> well, the population of Virginia City, which is a town that's built on top of the mother load, the population soared from 4,000 in 1862 to 25,000 in 1874. Wow. And the town also had the only elevator west of the Chicago west of Chicago at that time <laughs> in Virginia City where was the elevator at I don't know but I'm sure you can <laughs> visit and see <laughs> oh interesting yes um, the Nevada Territory 
actually became a state in 1864, and that was lar- largely in part due to the population explosion of Virginia City. Mm-hmm. There's a fact there. And then um, here, here's some interesting things, too, about, about the Comstock Lode. Okay. Being a miner at the Comstock Lode was very dangerous because of all you know the cave-ins and fires. So you always had to be on guard. But I guess the events happened so often, miners would have to jump into cages, risking death if the hoisting machines failed to lift them quickly enough. So that's pretty dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Super dangerous. All right. um, Virginia City, the the most influential newspaper in the city... Um, was where a reporter named Samuel Clemens first started going by his pseudonym of Mark Twain. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you, Mark Twain, he wrote a bunch of satire, and it's really, mm-hmm. I like his stuff. But in his later work, Twain did describe the hard life of the miners of the West, and it was probably because he was influenced by his time living near the Comstock Load. Mm. I bet it was. I did not know that. Yeah, that was interesting. Here's another one. Uh, German mining engineer. <laughs> I'm going to try to pronounce the name. <laughs> Philip Dedeschamer. <laughs> Dedeschamer. I don't know. Sounds good. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> we'll roll with that. Okay. Anyway, he's an engineer. And upon his visit to Nevada in 1860, he devises a system now referred to as the square set timbering in which heavy timber cubes are, re- are used to support underground mining tunnels. So oh. that's who, uh, where it became known. Oh, that's an interesting one, too. Never knew What's that, that tapping noise? Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> Might be me typing. Oh, oh. it's probably Rich typing. <laughs> oh, Rich is here. <laughs> yeah, he just popped Hello. in. Hello, Rich. <laughs> hmm. We, um, we're in the middle of the fun facts, and I'm going over... Some facts about the Comstock load. Cool. Um, I, think, I heard I the Virginia. Really... I was interested in that. Yeah, Virginia City is the city in Nevada that was basically built on top of the Comstock load. That's pretty wow. cool. Another innovation from the Comstock area, um, area era. <laughs> <laughs> it came in the form of a new smelting technique known as the Washu process. What? The Washu W A. S H O E. I never heard of that one. Yeah, it's a a process that was a technique that was invo- um, invented around this time because, and I meant to look this up, but there, I'm sure there's people out here who know what this means. But the German ang ang amalgamation amalgamation amalgamation. <laughs> A lot, a lot of A's, a lot of L's over there. Um, that process that they were doing um, back then and was just too slow. So someone named Almarin Paul and some other American miners, they replaced copper pans with a steam-heated iron pans, which cut the process down from weeks to hours. This new process was given that name, um, after a Native American valley of Washu. The Washu process. Washu. 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 B- Gazunta. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess that's a way to extract silver from ore. I'm guessing that amalgamation. Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. The Washu, I didn't know that. <laughs> Washu process. Well, Ooh. in 1857. Ethan Allen and Jose Balu Grosh, they found more of the lo- the load's ore. Um, however, before they could even work or file their claim, they both would dra- die tragically. Uh, Jose ran a pick through his foot, foot, which eventually resulted in lockjaw, and he died on September second, nineteen fifty seven, eighteen fifty seven, I think. Yeah, it's 1857. <laughs> Sorry. His brother, Alan, um, he got caught in a snowstorm and he suffered severely from exposure 
he was found before his death, but his legs were completely frostbitten. Yeah. And refusing to have them amputated, he died <laughs> before they can file their claim. And, and it ended up being a really um, profitable one because also working in the area was a name named Henry Tompkins Page Comstock. Um, they called him Old Pancake. I don't know. Good name. <laughs> That's what it said. I, I, I don't know why. Um, he was friends with the Grosch brothers, and he didn't. They didn't tell him where the location of their find was, but when Comstock heard of Alan's death in the spring of 1858, he took possession of their cabin and went in search for their claim. Wow. Comstock and two others uh, claim start started the rush to the Washu. Okay, <laughs> that's what it was known as, and it lasted for two decades. Um, that started that. Dang. And you know Henry Comstock, right? So that must be. I wonder if he's related to the yeah, Comstock. That, that is, Does it all that come back him. to that? Yeah. Uh, hmm. But anyway, Henry Comstock. When it was all said and done, here's another fact: he was actually broke when he left <laughs> in 1862, and he went to Oregon. Wow. How yes. ironic. Right? He died poor. Gee, how did how did he die? Any idea? Um, he killed himself. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yep. Gosh darn. Shot himself in the head. <laughs> oh man. So interesting story. I did not didn't know that about um the Comstock load. No, me neither. That's. You would think he'd be like the richest man in the you world. You would think. Yeah, you wouldn't think he'd die poor. Oh man. I... That's just a bummer. <laughs> I think that also happened to. Uh, the Sutter, was it, oh that one, the one who started the California Gold Rush, the Sutter Mill one, at Sutter's Mill, I forget his name, Marshall. Man. Um, they died poor as well. See, that's strange, <laughs> ain't it? <laughs> Terrible. Mm-hmm. That is. I don't know. I think the picking your foot and dying of. I know he didn't want like... to. Um... Yeah. Evidently, he didn't want to amputate his foot because he died of lockjaw <laughs> and his brother didn't want to amputate his leg so he <laughs> died from wrong complications from that <laughs> yeah it's like it's cut him off holy is that crazy that is that's just rough rough life back then man mercy <clears throat> uh, you know the comstock area is just just amazing and I, and I have never been there and I want to go and see it um, and I know Virginia City is probably really touristy but probably. you know it's it's just kind of like Tombstone I, I just want to go and see the still be see cool. the area yeah, and just to know that it has so much history it's got a lot of but, history um, yeah and it's actually you can find more out about the Comstock load if you visit Virginia City Nevada it's now designated as a national historic landmark and that was actually in 1961 when they did that. 1961. Um, it still draws more than 2 million visitors per year to see the historic buildings, museums, enjoy all the shops, restaurants, bed and breakfast inns, and casinos. That'd be a fun place to go. Definitely. I think so. Definitely. I don't know if we told you this, but when we were antiquing uh, in Arizona. Mm -hmm. We've got one of those brothel tokens that they used to give the guys to give to the ladies so that there wasn't a lot of cash oh, you know, floating around and or gold or whatever. Um, <laughs> so we found one in an antique Well, that's store. a cool find. And it was for Stella's Saloon in Virginia <laughs> City. <laughs> that's pretty neat. No, you didn't tell us that one. Good, good yeah. find. Yeah, you got to get there, Kathleen. Yes. That way, I, I I can see us wandering there. Yeah, now that you know Soon. all this, got all this information <laughs> on it too in your head, you'll be able to go. Oh, this is where that happened, or blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? That'd be really cool to to actually see your story, mm -hmm. kind of. That's pretty neat. I like it. Yeah, and then I've re been reading up on the Black Hills a lot too, mm -hmm. and we're hoping to. Well, we have to take a family vacation, you know, because it's been a while since we had all the kids, and 
um, you know, we're going to be moving in two years, so we want to take everybody and right. go somewhere. But I want to fit in prospecting, too. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a challenge with teenage girls. But we were thinking about going out to the Black Hills oh, and nice. yep, seeing really that area nice. and stuff. Your Griswold family vacation. Yep. That would work. It, it would really be like the Griswold it would family be. vacation. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> I'm seeing it in my head. That's why I'm laughing. Because I'm picturing it. Sorry. <laughs> so we'll have to find out when Rich is going to Idaho. So maybe we could just bring everybody there. <laughs> Yep. I don't know. <laughs> Tell them that. to find out. Appreciate they ain't telling no secrets. <laughs> no secrets. It'll hmm. be a hoot. Oh, yeah. Got any more fun facts, Kathleen? That's it. Oh, that darn. was the Comstock load on dredging up the news. That was very cool. Thank you. I learned more again tonight. I, every Wednesday is like school for me because i learned so it's much like on school. wednesday it is it's like i didn't like well, this stuff in school but when so you, i can tell you anything and you would you would just I believe, believe it yeah because you're <laughs> you're telling me it so see i didn't like school but boy i like when you tell it it's like interesting for some reason i just sit here and listen and listen and i'm like fade off listening to it it's like gosh <laughs> very it's interesting and i always get i'm like oh what am i gonna talk about but then you, my mind starts going, and then I go off on these tangents. I'm like, oh, I'll do that. No, you do I'll, great. I'll, I'll, I'll do research on that. <laughs> great. I mean, everybody, if, if we could applaud you, we would, because you do a great job well, every week. Do, do you know why, do you know how Samuel Clemens came up with the, with the name Mark Twain? Uh-uh. Do I that? know? Huh? Do I know why? Yeah. No. Uh-uh. Well, I'll let you use that for one of your fun facts, then. Oh, she can try to figure, find out how. Well, do you know? Nope. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, yes, I I'll look it up. That's why he wants to know, and that's a good question. Yeah, I don't have a clue either. No. None at all. Hmm. And I, I knew that was a pseudonym, but I couldn't remember for the right. life of me what his real name was. Nope. And then, oh yeah, that's what it was. Ah, nope. I had no idea either. But that's cool. He was born um, when the Halley's Comet, uh, when the Halley's Comet came, and he died when it visited again. Really? <laughs> so, that's, that's isn't that weird. crazy? That's, that's really, a fun fact about Mark. That's a fun <laughs> fact on its own, right there. Uh huh. Man, very cool. Great job, Kathleen. Yeah, Great thanks. job. No, oh, thank you for educating us. Another Wednesday of awesome learning. Right here on Prospector Radio. Rich Cooley's in the house. How are you tonight, Rich? I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> you, you yeah, it. we had some bad weather here, and I had to take the wife to work, so I had to pick her up again. Mm-hmm. I know. We, we had uh, about a quarter inch of ice and oh, on top of the snow. So. I know. Well, it's, it's always that ice with the snow every time. And then when I got the snow off today, it was a hard layer. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, I went to work, I took her to work, and went to work, and then... It rained and froze again, so God. like an ice skating ring. Mm-hmm. Ain't it getting old? Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm ready for dredging season. I was ready for warm season. That's all. No more crappy icy snowstorms. And God. definitely someone who would prefer to be too warm than too cold. Yeah, me too. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, it. my daddy always said you can always take it off, but you can't put it on if you ain't got it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. I love. I don't mind being hot. You can always no. take it off. Yeah, exactly. And you can just go and sit in air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or in the shade. Yeah, or in the shade. Or get in the creek. Hmm, I'm cold. What can I do? Freeze. Shiver. Freeze. <laughs> that's all I can do. Ah, I hate it. Stuck in the house. Yeah, right. I could sit in the house on the heater like a chihuahua. You know? <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> enough. Enough, enough. I'm sorry, everybody. But I can't stand it. I guess you all can tell it's making me <laughs> friggin' bad. It's really getting to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got cabin fever. This really is, bad. It's bad this year. Worse than last year. You know, because last year we had, it was mild, you know. 
It'd be like you'd have a couple cold days, and then, like, hey, it's 60 degrees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know? Well, I definitely was out in the creek more last year. Yeah, so you were already... By this time. You were in the creek in January, weren't you? <laughs> yep. Yeah. New Year's Day. I mean, this year's just been brutal. It's like, I just can't stand it no more. So what's happening I got a Rich? lot of catching up to do. I'm telling you. You got... Yeah, you do. You got, like, two months of catching up now. You're mm-hmm. going to have to power dredge your way to getting those numbers again right mm-hmm. but you'll do it it's all good all good so what's rich up to anything good I guess. Uh, not really <laughs> not really it's the same old stuff i was out plowing snow today for about two hours and that's not got crazy. really nothing else going on right now to the weather breaks. It's, I know, right? It it makes it hard for us to come up with stuff to talk about. I got stuff to do. I'm just lazy. I mean, <laughs> well, it's not lazy. You just don't want to do it because uh, it's cold. You know, it's cold outside. I, I could go in the garage and mess around, but I got the dredge up on uh, uh, saw horses right now in the garage. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put it out in the weather right now. I'll probably end up putting it in my neighbor's uh, box trailer. See, what I should do is... The rest of the winter. That's a good idea. What I should do is pull my motor off and just bring my floats in the house. At least it'd be warm in the basement, and I could go ahead and start doing my dressing it up thing. Yeah. yeah. Can't do it in the garage. Yeah, it's, just, it's just too cold in the garage. But I could do it in the basement, see? So that's an idea. Mm-hmm. Hmm. There you go. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yes. You can bring the whole thing down in the basement, I mean... Yeah. I just hate to bring the motor because of gas. Well, but, that's true because of the gas. Yeah. But, yeah. but I could always... I haven't been in my basement in like three years. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a lie. <laughs> wow. Oh, Lord. It's like a... It's creepy. <laughs> I don't have a basement. Mine's like a downstairs because I live in a bi-level. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. I actually got a basement, but, you know, it's, it's, I'm with Kathleen. It's kind of creepy. Cobwebs. Creepy. It leaks water. So oh, can... ours is a finished basement. It's just creepy. Oh, well, down heck. <laughs> you could have yours set up down there and be... I think we have a ghost. <laughs> well, you bring it home haunted brothel tokens and stuff. <laughs> well, right now, our uh, our son's living down there. <laughs> that's his That's his space. That's his domain. His, his man cave or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's cool, right? Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So. Apparently the ghosts don't bother him, right? Maybe when we go to sell the house, I'll go down there. <laughs> and not until. If you ain't been down there not in three until. years. I mean, I used to like it. I, I even started painting a mural on the wall mm-hmm. when we first moved in. And then I got spooked, and I never went down there again. <laughs> what spooked you? I don't, I can't say. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. We'll yes. leave it at that. But I, you... I see dead people. Uh, obviously. <laughs> <Shh>. <laughs> obviously. Oh, Lordy. You could have made it uh, one of the rooms down there a really cool gold mural on the wall of a creek and a dredge floating in the water. Oh, I know. And there's a bathroom down there Wouldn't right here. Cool? Yeah. And you can put all your dredge art oh, down there up on the walls and different be. frames. Yeah. And... I know. Not until I get some sage. <laughs> <laughs> Call Ghostbusters. One or the other. Yes. We don't have to. <laughs> Give Dennis a, 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 a whatever. I can't even think now. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, I'm exhausted anyway. That working third shift two nights. That's just not my gig, man. I I, I I didn't know you worked nights. I work I don't normally, but I worked Monday night and Tuesday night, eight to four, because the kitchen oh, wow. kitchen needed painted at work, and that's the only time uh-huh. you could do it when there's nobody in it. And it's like, eh, it's, it's, you sure are using that word awful heavy there, buddy. What? What? Work. I know, and it's just like. Oh, yeah. You clocked in and you clocked out, maybe? I worked. <laughs> I worked my butt off for two days, and it just threw me off. I'm not used oh, to Oh, so that. you're not going to come help me paint my apartment that I have to get fixed up? Oh, you're not doing it at night, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> From 8 to 4. <laughs> it's like, holy No, Lord. but on Saturday, that's not good. No, oh, geez, yeah. So I, I'm I, not dredging. No. No, that sucks. I hate painting. Don't you hate painting? 
Yes. Painting is like <laughs> mind numbing, and that's what I've done for two days. It's like, eh, and patching and painting and blah. Now, if it's my own place and I'm fixing it up, yeah, it's exciting, but not mm-hmm. when I'm not fixing up somebody's, you know. Right. Or like <laughs> I said, dude, you have to do it for work. It's like, oh, right. it's just not fun. And you're by yourself and it's boring and it was just boring. Mm, I got it done. So I go I wonder with... if gold miners say that. What? If, like <clears throat> gold miners who do it for a living. Oh, and then, yeah. did they ever get tired of it? Did they ever get bored with it? Yeah, I wonder. I, mean, <laughs> I wouldn't, but I, w- you don't I do don't, it for a living either. <laughs> I don't think I would, honestly. I don't think I would. I think it'd be an exciting job every day. Yeah. You know, even if it was like working on a big mine, like you know the Hoffmans or Parker or something. I think it'd be exciting because. Just to see the results you get at the end of each week or something, it'd just be cool, I think. But it'd be better. But do they show the workers the gold? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just wondering. Yeah, right. I wonder. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Another one of them things make you a hmm moment, Dennis. You with us, Dennis? I'm still here. <laughs> hey, uh, you haven't done your Snapple Snapple thing in like forever. You still drink Snapple? Well, yeah. Do you still got any <laughs> Snapple real facts for us anymore? Oh, I've got. I'm having I've your got, bucket of. Yeah. You've probably got a big bucket full of them. Yeah, I've got like. Uh, when I go to take it in, scrap it in, I'm going to get a lot of money. You got any close by? No. Ah, darn. You didn't pop yeah, open. I'll, the... say, I'll say quick, that for Give him a Snapple. Give, <laughs> give that man a Snapple quick. <laughs> I got. I got. I'm going to be here. No, my ice melted. I got one in my hand right now. There we go. There we go. Let's hear it. <laughs> got a real fact? In no, there? I got my Snapple drink in my hand, but I don't have a, I don't have a lid. lid. Oh, it sounded like you opened it. No, I, I poured it in my... I, I take my Snapple and I pour it in my my Jeff Williams mug. My wife got me for Christmas. The one that says, so, so come on, let's go. Uh-huh. Yeah, you put it in there and it like stays cold for like... Three years, you know. Hmm. <laughs> really cool. Do you have Jeff Williams pajamas? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I'm, I'm sure if they come out with them, my wife would have bought them for me. I want to get him some pajamas that has our faces all over it, Kathleen. <laughs> I don't know if I want my face on his pajamas. I'd put your face on the back of it, and I'd be, uh, never mind. <laughs> you know, have you, me, Rich, Scott, Shed, all over them. And give them the dentist. <laughs> Leave me out of it. <laughs> I think it'd be the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. I see yeah, them. but we'd be the butt of every joke. <laughs> yeah, we would. <laughs> <be>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm. <laughs> I do think it's a good idea, though. If he were Jeff Williams once, come on, we love Jeff. But I think he should, maybe Jeff should wear our pajamas. <laughs> What do you think about that one? I, I think I would settle for like a shirt or a, ca- <laughs> a hat on one of his videos, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Show us some love, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Show us some love, Jeff. That's right. Your number, we have your number one fan. That's right. That, our pirate. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Dennis is, let's see, the number one fan of Jeff Williams, the number one fan of Oak Island, the number one fan of. Snapple. Yeah. Snapple, number one fan of Chevy, number one fan of, what else, Dennis? <laughs> what am I forgetting? The Jeopardy theme song. The Jeopardy theme song, <laughs> number one <laughs> fan of, uh, I'm trying to think. Come on, Dennis, help me here. No, I, I would I, I would say that the number one fan would probably be, it's a top two. Mm-hmm. Oak Island and Jeff Williams. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's good. Let's see. Hmm. Kathleen? Mine? Yep, yours. Whew. I'm not really starstruck. <laughs> Number one fan of... Um... Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> I guess hey, that works. <laughs> gold? <laughs> okay, no, that works. Okay. Shad? Yeah, I like gold. <laughs> yes, you do. Shad? Number one fan of... Oh, well, this is easy. <laughs> Why is that easy? Because you're sitting here holding a gun. No, it's a bayonet. <laughs> um, 
Number one fan. Of. Of. Uh, of. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow, really? I yeah, don't know I either. Really don't. You don't I, know I don't either, have any, don't have anything special. I mean, Not in like you're like, like you just admire it. It's like the greatest. Uh, <clears throat> I like gemstones. Uh, See? <laughs> And now, now, let me think about this for a minute. Me? Wow. You're right. <laughs> it's rough. It's hard when you have to... Yeah. You're not I don't fun. like any celebrities, so... What you don't well, it doesn't have to be a celebrity. No, it doesn't have to be a celebrity. Just well, I'll tell you what. I know it. Okay. It's Prospector's Radio well, Gold Prospector's there you go. There you go. There's what I was looking There's for. Your answer. Good answer, Shad. Man. And I guess I'll say... I'm the number one fan of Shad and Dennis. <laughs> and, and Rich and Kathleen. That's my fan base. Oh, look at that. We got a groupie. You guys are my number one fan. Or I'm your number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that Freudian slip? Or did you hear it? <laughs> That's what it is. I, I just got it backwards there for a bit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, I, I can say my number one priority is the show. Oh, well, there you go. That's cool. Yeah. Well, it, besides it, my wife. It rings up there. Mm-hmm. It does. It's, yeah, right. Our, our family first, and then the show, the site, all that good stuff, and our listeners and members well, and we, stuff Well, like that, that comes with the show. Right. The listeners, the... Oh, yeah. I think we're like, what? Ninety people away from seven thousand members now. We're gonna have seven thousand. Yeah, we're like right there. I will have that within. I'm hoping a month. Let's get that seven thousand, so we can put seven thousand yeah, be cool. behind us and start working on ten thousand. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. That would be a number. Who, man? Well, I'm seeing a lot of folks join the Facebook page. Yes, that's really good. Uh, the group that one's. Ex- just exploded mm-hmm. yeah for everybody who don't know you can follow us on facebook at the official gold prospector space prospector radio page or we got the prospector radio page and gold prospector space page on facebook so we got three facebook pages actually but the most actions on the official gold prospector space one <clears throat> and then there's always the official indiana gold hunters page over there on facebook and then you got us we're on the Instagram, the Twitter, the the Twitter, the Twitter, uh, the, <laughs> the <laughs> Spreaker, the iTunes, the TuneIn, the iHeart, the uh, SoundCloud, the uh, all of them. Jeez, yeah. I forget sometimes how many we got. Well, now they got now they have the uh, Snapchat. You seen that Snapchat? Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I just for don't us. do any of that. I, mean, I just don't think that one's for us. I that's more like a. I don't think that was for us. I don't think that meets our criteria. I, would, I don't know what it is, honestly. It's kind of strange. You could do a Snapchat and then just do a daily quote or saying. It's got some funny stuff on it, too. Mm-hmm. It's well, kind of like this Twitter thing, you know, where you like just the Twitter leave something. Machine, and, yeah. So we're like kind Chad, of Chad kind Biffle of gets all the deals, that hashtag, he steals it. You know, something, whatever, you yeah. know. Yeah. So we're out there. So if you're ever looking, and don't forget the apps on the Google Play Store and the Apple Store to listen to the show. Somebody was asking about the app the other day and didn't realize you can just download the app for your phone. It's simple yeah. to listen to the show. And you can listen to us live right from your phone or your whatever. There's an app for that. There's an app for that. That's right. And I think on that note, let's go ahead and wrap it up. It's like 1030. I didn't realize it was that late. <laughs> well, yeah, I got to get up early. I know. So do I. Back to normal mm-hmm. for me and Kathleen and Shad. And I, get, I have to actually leave the house. Everybody gets to work tomorrow. So we we just want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Rich, I'm glad you made it, buddy. Yeah, brr. Uh, I had to work today. Yeah, and you did good you still made it <laughs> we almost had scott he's just having some serious skype issues so I oh, is he? yeah uh, so hopefully he gets that squared away kathleen great segment as yep. always we appreciate it and shad thank you for everything my friend dennis thank you thanks everybody for stopping by and hanging out with us tonight 
And we'll catch you Sunday night where we will have Ricky from Roaring Camp will be our guest Sunday night on Prospector Radio. So until then, have a great week, everybody. Stay warm. Good Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Be sure to tune in next Sunday at 730 for another great show. For updates and more info, please go to www.prospectorsradio.com.